Hey guys, it's Tony here. I just felt in my spirit this week that I needed to bring up something that the Lord has been showing me is a, something that we need to be aware of at this time of year when uh, many of us gather with various people that maybe we don't see on a regular basis throughout the year. See, because some of us get together with family regularly, some people that are like family regularly, but then this is the time of year that all kinds of stuff kind of starts to pop up when we have struggles uh, in relationships or, you know, we want things to be right, but they haven't been and we may not know why. Because we choose who we hang out with most of the time, but at holidays, a lot of us love to gather with relatives at you know, any opportunity that we can. And so that brings up some stuff because if there's unhealed places, it causes a lot of pain. And I just know from the last couple of years and our working with people that this is the time of year many, many, many will contact us for help. So what what is it that the Lord has been bringing up to me to share with you? It's just on the spirit of offense, you know, you know what that is. It's a person's offended easily. They're, they're hurt easily. It could even be a lie that they believe in their own heads. It could be something that didn't even happen. But we can make assumptions easily. We can believe the worst easily. We can think wrong thoughts that aren't even things that happened. Or sure, there could be things that happened. But who does it hurt? Is it hurting the person that did the, the deed? Likely not. It, it, they're probably just moving on. But if we have a spirit of offense in us, we're hurting on the inside and we're holding them to it and it, it's just causing us a lot of pain. So we don't need to be miserable. And we're not beneficial when we're miserable. And that isn't God's best for us. You know, I, I think of Jesus saying in John 10, I have come to give you life and life to the full or other versions will say abundant life. Wow. But what does the devil come for? Three reasons to kill, steal and destroy. He's not brilliant. He comes, though, in sneaky ways and we could take on the spirit of offense so easily and so I just want you to be mindful of that this week as you start to gather with, with relatives and with those that maybe you, um, you don't connect with all the time. But you know in your heart you want to connect with them and you just don't know what's missing. Well, first I'd say start with forgiveness. That, that's everything. In Hebrews 12, it talks about Jesus' blood being so awesome because of the sprinkling of that is the forgiveness in our hearts that can occur and how that impacts other people. Read it for yourself in Hebrews 12. But there's some good stuff in starting with forgiveness. Repenting on behalf of how, how things have come up. Maybe, you know, you, you didn't even intend for them to come across in a way. You do, though, what Paul says in Romans, as far be it for me, live at peace with one another. You can't change someone else. You can pray for them. You can pray for them. You can intercede for them that they would understand the love of God. And I don't mean just in our heads, the love of God, but in our hearts, the love of God. Because when we have that revelation light, what, what the Lord has done for us, we want to pass that off to others. And you know, the Lord wants no one to perish. We all memorize John 3, 16. Maybe that's the first verse you memorize. Maybe, you know, maybe that's what you remember. But, but remember, yeah, he came for us. He died for us so that none would perish but have eternal life. None would perish. So then if my heart is in a place where I want someone to perish, or if I 
it, you know, if I'm broken and I, I won't even look through the lens of what they're going through, or if I am not thinking naturally about what the Father in Heaven's heart is for them, then I need to do some heart work myself. I can't change them, but I can live in opposition to anything that's that's not setting itself up in the right way. You know, in 2 Corinthians 10, it talks about there are things that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. So there are ways that we act, whether it's it's just an outright action, whether it's in our heads and our hearts, you know, it, it impacts us. So we must be so cautious to take these things that feel like triggers, something's welling up in us and it's not right. And we go, ooh, this doesn't align. Instead of deflecting it and saying it's somebody else's issue, why don't we deal with our own issues before the Father? He wants to meet with us. So if you have to, you go into a bathroom. I do that in public places. It's fine. You go where you need to go to get alone, but then confess with your lips out loud. It might be quiet, but out loud, right? But mean it because the enemy knows when you don't mean it to. I'm serious. We've seen a lot of people not get healed or delivered because they kind of, you know, just say it all. And I'm like, nope, say it like you mean it. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how much shifts. So we must believe it and we must speak it and just allow the Lord, you know, just declare the right things, confess that which isn't right, break off lies, tell those lies to go and speak the truth. And then if you don't know, because you know what, sometimes there's a whole lot of witchcraft going on these days that blinds people. I see veils over eyes. I see fingers and ears like they can't hear aligned with good things. Mm -mm. If we can't hear what the Lord wants to speak to us, we need to cast off those things. If there's witchcraft, I break agreement with witchcraft in the name of Jesus. And when we break that off and we apply the blood of Jesus and we say, I want to hear, Lord, I believe some of us are going to start to hear where we've, where we've been deaf. And when that hearing comes, we're going to hear the word of God then. We're actually going to be able to apply it. And then we're going to shift atmospheres in our own homes, in those homes we step into, in our workplaces, in the marketplace. It's pretty awesome to be part of something bigger than ourselves. But the enemy of our souls loves to get us caught up in our little world. And so instead of sitting on our phones on Thanksgiving in a room full of people, interact. You might have to break off some of this stuff first. You might have to repent of some stuff because you could have a fence up in your heart because of offense. And so you just isolate. You just watch the TV. You ignore the things that, that matter. But in the end, what matters are the people. That's all that matters. And so I just want to pray for you because I just know that there are greater days ahead in the end of this year, with all the opportunities to gather, is an opportunity for you to see what the Lord has done in your own life and then take it to the world. So let me pray. Father, in the name above every other name, Jesus, I thank you for each person that said, I need to know, where am I being offended? Where have I partnered with offense? And if they can't hear in the mighty name of Jesus, I break off witchcraft. Witchcraft that says you won't hear. You'll be subject to someone else. You'll be under somebody else's control. You'll blindly go through life. You'll be lulled to sleep so that you can't do what Jesus did. But Jesus, I thank you that those are lies. And we ask you to judge those at your feet those lies, so that the kingdom of God is advanced, starting in our own life, so that we actually hear with your ears and see with your eyes what you're doing. Lord, let us see people as you see them. Let us hear them as you hear them. Let us speak to them as you would speak to them and remain silent where you would remain silent. But let us be bold 
where you're telling us to be bold. Lord, nothing about this is a formula. It's leaning in to you. Lord, where there's, where there's a trigger in our hearts that comes up, let us be quick to listen to you. So we get your perspective. So that you're glorified. But in the meantime, because you're such a good, good father, you do it for our good. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for your body, for your name, for your mind, and for your Holy Spirit. We praise you for what you're going to do. And so as my friends go out into places this week and in the weeks to come, we bind lying and twisting spirits that would manipulate thinking, that would control thinking. We'd actually ask that your spirit would be so prevalent. They would, they would hear, we would all hear what you're doing, that we could walk out what you would have us walk. And the ground we step on will be changed for your glory. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, that is power. There's power in the name of Jesus. And so I pray that you will find super abundant life this week as you may step differently, as you listen more, you tune your heart to sing his grace and you walk it out. Be blessed. Goodbye.